So here is the Earth and here is the Moon. The maximum gravitational potential between them, let's say it's over here, is minus 1.28 megajoules per kilogram. If we also have this data, can we figure out the minimum speed that it will take if we were to throw a rock from the Earth, or rocket, for it to actually reach the moon. Before we solve this question, let's think about an analogy. What is actually happening to the gravitational potential? Over here on Earth, the gravitational potential is going to be pretty negative, and then it's going to rise to a value which is closer to zero. And then on the moon, it's also going to be pretty negative, I don't know, let's say something over here. You can kind of think of this as a graph of Vg, the gravitational potential with respect to distance r, with this region here being negative. Hmm. Well, talking about potentials, let's do a really really simple case. Imagine that I had some sort of a bump, something like this, and I had a ball and I wanted to figure out the minimum speed that it would take for the ball to be able to row over onto the other side. Well, if the height of this bump here is h, then we could just use the kinetic energy of the ball, e is equal to a half mv squared, has to be at minimum equal to mgh. If it goes above that value, the ball will have enough energy to not have zero speed at this stage and it's going to grow down the hill. Well, we could use exactly the same thinking to figure out the minimum speed that it would take if we were to throw something to reach the top of the gravitational potential and then still have enough speed to go over onto the other side, be attracted towards the moon and reach it. There's one difference though. So we normally take the zero of the gravitational potential energy to be here in this case, but the gravitational potential is not zero at our starting point for our Earth-Moon problem. It's going to be some pretty negative value closer to the surface of the Earth. So tell you what, let's figure out our change in gravitational potential. So this will be equal to the maximum value, which is this, take away the potential on the surface of the Earth. Well, this here will just be equal to minus 1.28 times 10 to the power of 6. And then we have to be careful with the minus sign because the potential is still negative here. So it's going to be minus and then the formula is minus gm over r. Well, this here will be equal to minus 1.28 times 10 to the power of 6. Minus minus gives me a plus 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. The mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24. Divide that by the radius of the Earth, which is 6370 times 10 to the power of 3. I don't need a bracket here. Evaluating this expression we are going to get a change of potential to be 6.12 times 10 to the power of 7 joules per kilogram. Now let's say that we're throwing a rock of mass m, then we can simply set a half mv squared to be equal to the change of gravitational potential energy, which is equal to mass multiplied by the gravitational potential like so. Those are going to cancel. What we what we're going to get is that v is going to be equal to the square root of 2 delta v, which is equal to 2 times 6.12 times 10 to the power of 7. And up to two significant figures, this is equal to approximately 11,000 meters per second. So if you're going to throw something at that speed, it's probably going to reach the moon. People normally advise not to post two YouTube videos on the same day, but I made this problem a little bit harder and a lot more fun, and this is precisely why you should have a look at this brand new video that I've just also posted right over here.